Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to postmodernism and audiences. This video is going to be particularly relevant for you if you are studying postmodernism in a little bit more depth and particularly or especially if you are studying the CIE media exam uh, because postmodernism appears as a optional topic on the second exam paper. The specification says that you need to understand the link between postmodernism and audiences so I'm going to try and explain some of those links in this video. With postmodern products, audiences are often considered to be more diverse um, and fragmented. And that means that we're not one big mass audience anymore. We don't really get, and what we used to have in the past was, you know, millions and millions of people watching one TV programme on a Saturday night. Now we have so much choice that our audiences have become fragmented into tiny sections. Um, and so we're much more diverse, fragmented audience than ever before. We have access to hundreds of thousands of films on streaming sites. We have access to hundreds of TV channels, uh, billions of websites. So we've become separated out into these tiny micro audiences. And that means that postmodern content has often become more niche by some people's opinions. It's become more fragmented itself and it's become what we call narrow casted, i.e. we're not broadcasting to a big audience. We're narrow casting to a much smaller audience. Every media product has a much smaller, more specific audience. Postmodern audiences like to be more active. They like to take part. And we've seen that in a lot of products, whether that's social media where we like to comment and like and share or whether it's interactive products like interactive TV and film. So for example, in the film Bandersnatch, audiences were able to get involved and make particular personal choices about what route they wanted the narrative to take and therefore what the characters were going to do. In the more recent show Kaleidoscope on Netflix, audiences were able to make conscious decisions about what order they wanted to watch the episodes in, in order to create unique narratives. Postmodern audiences are living in worlds that are ever more consumerist, capitalist and artificial. We are surrounded by simulacra and artificiality, whether that is artificial worlds, virtual reality, metaverses, etc., or whether it is products that offer us supposed uh, simulacra of um, real life. We're surrounded by filters that change the way we look and the way we sound. And often audiences can't tell the difference between reality and these simulacra. And therefore, postmodern audiences are often stuck in this state of hyper-reality where we can't tell what's real and what's not. Postmodern audiences have become more interested in technology, but also more distrustful of it over time. So, um, you know, whilst we have access to a huge range of new technology, we're also starting to see the potential problems that this technology could cause people have started to distrust science, distrust facts. And that is perhaps because of the postmodern um, access we have to the media. If everyone can contribute and everyone can contribute their own narratives, we can't trust anything we see in the media anymore. So we're now living in this world where we really can't put our faith in stuff that we read, see or hear in the media. Postmodern audiences have become more sceptical about meta-narratives, which means that we often um, are interested in seeing competing micro-narratives. Have a look at Leotard's theory for this to help you understand it. Um, we want things that are a bit more challenging, unconventional, that do things a bit differently, that break the rules. We don't just want to see the same old conventions, the same old genre, the same old narratives. We want to see products that mix things up and do things a bit differently. And you can see this in the growing popularity of things like parodies, intertextual references, etc. And because of these kind of the intertextual references that are becoming much more popular in the media, particularly in postmodern media, it can be said that postmodern audiences actually need quite a lot of knowledge of popular culture or cultural capital in order to actually understand the products they're seeing. So they need an existing knowledge of things like pop music, film, TV, radio, because there's so much intertextuality and so much parody and pastiche that if they don't understand these references, then they really won't grasp the full meaning of postmodern products. But actually audiences are encouraged to make their own interpretations of the media. We're encouraged to use our knowledge of pop culture, our knowledge of genre, our knowledge of other products and interpret that media uh, the way we want to. And every audience's interpretation in a postmodern world is just as valid as another. So the idea is that no matter who you are, no matter how powerful you are, how wealthy you are, whether you are working class, whether you are white, whether you are black, 
in a postmodern world, everyone has equal access and everyone has a say, which means that in a postmodern world, in theory, the world is becoming more democratic and accessible. So that was my simple guide to postmodernism and audiences. Don't forget to check out my channel for other videos that might be relevant for you. For you.